Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Kingdoms. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a fantastic day. Check this out. Iron Farm that we built last time is working wonderfully. Uh, I know it's been over a week since my last Kingdoms episode. Uh, I've been sick. Um, but I let this thing run. I can't remember if I let it uh, run overnight once or twice. But either way... I've sorted through these chests, and we have a lot of iron, and, and a lot of poppies. <laughs> we have many, many poppies as well. Uh, so this is pretty fantastic. I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. It's working wonderfully. I think one thing I want to do is add some sort of an item filter here. Uh, to filter out the poppies and just get rid of them. I think that would probably be a wise decision. Probably just put it, like, over here somewhere, have them spit them out into the water, and they can just... De they'll despawn after five minutes. Um, and it should be fine. Because otherwise... I mean, look at the, the, the number of poppies we have here. We're never going to go through that many poppies. Like, ever. This is... <laughs> This is so many poppies. Uh, but we also have a, a massive quantity of iron now, which is exactly what we need. Um, do I have a, do I not have a crafting bench around here somewhere? I feel like I should. But I don't see one in my chest. I don't see one in there. Did I, do I really like legitimately not actually have a crafting bench right now? I legitimately do not actually have a crafting bench right now. Wow, I am shocked by that um okay well i guess we will put the uh, i guess we'll take the iron with us without actually packing it up first and bundling it into blocks and i mean you might as well take the poppies as well right like does our redstone box have the stuff to make an item um, uh, I sh this should be everything I need, although I don't know if I have any other blocks. Anyway, tell you what, I'm going to pack this stuff up. I'll see if I can get an item filter in here. Oh, you know what? I don't have, uh, I don't have filterable items, so we'll have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to change this a little bit. I'm going to have to run back to the storage room and stuff anyway, but let me get this stuff all packed up and uh, get a couple things taken care of. I'll meet up with you in just a moment. All right, guys, I am back. I went to the Ender Ender, repaired all my stuff, put all the iron away, blah, blah, blah. And now we're here in Solus, the City of Light. And I want to talk a little bit about some uh, some news, some Minecraft news. So Dinnerbone, one of the Java Edition developers, uh, has been tweeting about some of the things that are going to be coming in 1.14, which will be the next major update for Minecraft, the Village and Pillage update. I, I did a video after Minecon Earth kind of talking about some of the, um, the things that were announced there, but afterwards, they announced that they're going to be doing something that has basically been something I've, asking, uh, I've been asking for pretty much since I started playing Minecraft. This is the thing that I would always answer when people say, if you could add something to the game, what would it be? Slabs and stairs and walls and fences for all the things. That is what's being added in 1.14. And now I am, 1.14 is basically gonna be my favorite update of all time. Uh, so, here's what we know. Dinnerbone has said there are 14 new blocks. Uh, there are a total of 40 new blocks which is 14 new slabs, 14 new stairs, and 14 new walls. Just kidding, 14 new slabs, 14 new, slayers, uh, new stairs, and 12 new walls. I can't read, apparently. Um, <laughs> I've got the tweet over on my other monitor. But the reason we're here in Solus is because I want to talk about how that could affect some of the areas that we have built in this world. Because, as you may know, this texture right here is actually polished diorite in my kingdom's texture pack. And granite is very similar, except it's a dark stone brick instead of a light stone brick. And they have announced that um, andesite, diorite, and granite are all getting uh, slabs, stairs, and walls. 
So that means suddenly we're going to have slabs, stairs, and walls for our stone brick. You have no idea how happy I am about this. Like, this is huge. And maybe, now that I'm kind of looking at this, maybe Solus isn't necessarily the best place to show this, but like, having a lighter stone stair that we can put in these little gaps right here, or instead of being forced to use these, uh, these stone slabs here, we could use diorite slabs. Or, like, uh, here's a better example. I have a much better example of this. Let's actually head over to Regnum. So, first of all, look at these walls, right? These walls right here are essentially, um, granite. Just polished granite is what this, uh, this dark, this darker stone is. And in some cases, I had to put a, uh, I, I was going to put a carpet on top or put it around the whole thing just because make it uh, spawn proof. And then I ultimately decided not to because I didn't have that much wool. But these could now be swapped out for stairs. For granite stairs and uh, or polished granite stairs. And they would look great. I really hope that they have a polished. Ooh, that's something I didn't consider. Hmm, I'll have to, hopefully we'll get polished and unpolished stair and slab variants. I'm not really sure. I'm hoping so. But that'll be one example. Look over here at the road, right? We look at this road. This road consists of cobblestone, stone brick, granite, and I guess there isn't any diorite here. I thought I'd use some diorite in this, in this, uh, like, pavement mix as well. But then the out, uh, the outer part here is basically cobblestone and stone brick uh, stairs because I couldn't get the depth that I wanted with this little, like, I don't know what you would call it, like a little drainage thing? <laughs> this little gap, this little divot right here that kind of goes down, this little ditch sort of thing. I couldn't get that using granite because there was no granite stairs. So now this could have included granite um, or these slabs. We could have had granite slabs. I mean, the, the possibilities here, just to kind of demonstrate the power of this, this is, in, this is gonna be amazing for us because I use granite and diorite in my kingdom's texture pack all the time because a, dark, uh, a darker stone and a lighter stone open up just so many options it's it oh man it's gonna be so good it's gonna be so good i'm so excited for this um and i kind of want to check uh, let's uh, let's actually pop over real quick into a creative world and let's just see if we can kind of figure out what is going to be getting stuff because presumably if it's 14 new slabs 14 new stairs and 12 new walls Presumably, pretty much everything that gets a stair will get a slab and so on and so forth. And we already know that granite, diorite, and andesite are definitely going to be getting slabs and stairs. Because I've, I've seen pictures. They were tweeted, right? We know that those are going to be getting slab, stairs, and walls. And then I'm hoping... Uh, and brick. We've seen brick as well. Brick has been tweeted as well. So that's four. I'm going to hope that Polished is also going to get slab stairs and walls. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Presumably regular stone will. Cobblestone already has it. Stone brick already has it. Maybe mossy? Mossy stone brick and mossy cobble? That would be amazing. I would be so happy about that. That would be incredible. Um, end stone brick, maybe? Or end stone? Probably not both. I'm guessing end stone brick will, because it doesn't really make sense for it to not have it. So now we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 
Maybe regular end stone. I mean, it is called stone. So let's, uh, yeah, let's put it down. Let's, let's see here. I'm just trying to sort through what else would potentially get slabs and stairs. I mean, if it's only 14, that means it's not going to be wool. It's not going to be concrete. It's not going to be terracotta because that would be like 14 basically by themselves. Ah, I bet red nether brick does. I'll bet you anything red nether brick is on that list. Hmm. Maybe smooth stone? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I bet that's our list right there of stuff that's going to get slabs, stairs, and fences. Slash walls. I should say walls. Also, I just realized that this... That texture needs to be fixed. <laughs> that's messed up in my texture pack. But I'll bet you that these are the blocks... I'm calling it right now. These are the blocks that are going to get slabs, stairs, and walls. And honestly, that's a pretty good list. I'm happy with this. Uh, assuming that the polished and the unpolished of the uh, andesite, granite, and diorite all get slabs, stairs, and fences, that alone is going to be huge for us. And then having mossy cobble and mossy stone brick slabs and stairs will also be super super good there's gonna be a lot of options i mean i suppose cracked stone could also potentially be like you could have like cracked stone brick maybe that could also get uh slab stairs and stuff but yeah this is gonna be great i'm <laughs> i'm super happy for this update um and it sounds like we're gonna start getting some of these uh by the end of the year i'm gonna take that one out for now, or maybe, uh, maybe it'll be endstone. Hmm. I don't know. I, I really wish we were getting concrete, uh, walls and slabs and stuff, though. Like, that would be really good. I really feel like concrete should have slabs and stairs. But anyway, uh, <laughs> This is a huge step in the right direction. I'm quite happy with it. Um, but anyway, let's pop back into the actual Kingdom's world and uh, get to work on a couple of things. All right, guys, I am back, and I've kind of decided something over the last, well, quite a while, actually, and that is that I think I want a new storage room. There's the storage room in Regnum, but it's getting um, a little bit small, shall we say, uh, because from the time that it was built, a lot of stuff has been added to the game. <laughs> Uh, all the coral and all the update aquatic stuff, kelp and blah, 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 blah. It's also not automated in any, in any way, shape or form. It's a completely manual storage room, which doesn't really bother me that much. And then I've got this storage room that I built at the beginning of season two. I've really come to not like this storage room. <laughs> the fact that it is not one room the fact that it's two separate areas and i have to run back and forth um kind of drives me insane <laughs> i don't like it uh, and, and i've i've grown to kind of hate it as time has gone on uh, and i like it less and less so now that we have an iron farm in this world and a gold farm and all this sort of technical stuff I think I want to make a proper storage room. We actually have the iron now that I could make a new storage room um, and not have like a billion hoppers everywhere. Uh, like I have I have the iron for the hoppers, uh, which makes a big difference. Uh, what I don't really have, though, I'm actually running pretty low on redstone. I'm going to need a fair amount of redstone. And now that we have this iron farm, we can make it really easy uh, to set up a mining beacon and then another beacon as well. Uh, so let's actually grab a bit of coal here and let's grab maybe a stack of logs. I need to build a tree farm as well. Um, now that big spruce trees create podzel, uh, now that that's a thing, I want to actually have a dedicated uh, farm for trees because I don't want puzzle spreading all over my areas that I'm building in. Um, so I want to make an actual, like, proper tree farm 
at some point. That's another project for another day, though. But anyway, now that we have the iron, we can basically just have a couple of beacon bases set up. I think I only have this one beacon. I might have another one somewhere in some chest, in some storage room somewhere. I, I really don't know. Um, but I believe... I don't... That doesn't look like 50 blocks. I think... Well, maybe it is, though. I mean, maybe I should just go and move it. Like, this is probably 25 blocks, I'm guessing. Either way, though, let's do this. So we'll go, um, do, 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 do. So that's there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll set up a beacon like right here, I think. And a good amount of this is, like, already cleared out, so it shouldn't be too bad. But if I put this beacon right here, that should make it pretty easy for us to take advantage of our beacon mine. And then when we're done, we can just take the beacon. We can basically just pick up the whole beacon and take the beacon with us, but leave the beacon base behind. Because at this point, who cares, right? Like, I've got uh, essentially infinite iron. So I don't really need to worry so much about being, like, careful with my use of that resource anymore. I can just, like, go for it, and it'll be fine. Um, so we'll just kind of do something like that. Uh, we need to do the outside first. Okay. Okay. And then, is that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need a little 3x3, three three like, right here. I'm just gonna throw a torch, like, right there for a minute. Come on. And there we go. There we go, beacon. And then... It's just a matter... Of essentially pilling our, pillaring our way up to the surface. Where the beacon light will pop out and that should give us instamine down below and i know technically you're never supposed to dig straight up but the reality is when you have like an efficiency four or efficiency five gravel uh, or shovel or something you really don't need to worry about it too much because you can break through the uh, the sand and gravel before it suffocates you um we're pretty close to the surface now i think yeah we're basically at the surface like, we should pop through any second now. No? Am I in a mountain or something? I feel like we should be there by now. Come on. Oh, there's the dirt. Hey, look at that. Okay. So now we can dig all the way back down. The beacon light will shine through. And we will have Instamine down in our beacon mines and we can then use that to get tons of stone which i'm actually running a little bit low on I, I i have quite a bit of it but at the same time like there we go there we go lovely it's kind of clear a little bit of a ring around this thing and that should do the trick i think that should be fine and then over here now we can go oh now we can start making some torches so you you and bada bing bada boom we've got our stuff this is what we need and then it's pretty easy to just plop down some torches along the way. This is like the most satisfying thing in Minecraft. Just insta-mine. <laughs> Beacon mining. It's so satisfying. It really is. Just the, the things breaking. May I don't know. Maybe. Well, then again. I mean, I guess insta-mining packed ice is still insta-mining. I mean, that sound. <laughs> the packed ice sound as it breaks. That's 
pretty, like, pretty fantastic. Um, but anyway, we got a giant lava pool here. We're gonna grab any resources we come across. Do I have a, uh, I should have a water bucket, right? I do. Okay, good. I'll just toss that in there. And you... Break all the obsidian. There we go. Yeah, managed to break a torch while I was at it, but no surprise there. Okay. Uh, break. Probably going to be lava down here as well. Yep. I mean, it's not like I really need to mine the gold. Because... We've got the gold farm now, but at the same time, like, if we're gonna break it, you might as well pick it up, right? Hey, that's what we're looking for. Redstone, fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, I think this is gonna be kind of one of those things where, uh, the storage room... The storage room project is gonna be sort of an interesting one. Because I know that I want to have... I, I know I want a new store. Because the old one, the, the ones that exist right now are just not really cutting it for me for... A number of different reasons. Uh, you need to die. And the... The question is basically going to be, where do we want to put it? And how do we want to design it? Like, I'm thinking... I'm, I'm like, 99% sure that I want it in Nembonia. Because if Nembonia is going to be, like, the new kind of quote-unquote crown jewel of the world, you know, as uh, like right now I would consider Regnu to be kind of the crown jewel of the world, but Regnu already has a storage room. And I'm not really that, uh, we don't need a, a second storage room in the same city. Like that, I mean, even if I'm not a huge fan of the previous storage room, honestly, like I like the one in Regnu better than I like the one in uh, Bullstone, but... I'm kind of of the opinion that, like, if we're going to make a new storage room, we should probably put it somewhere where there isn't already a bunch of... Uh, there isn't already a storage room. Because even if I don't really care for the one in, like, Regnum or the one in Bullstone, those ones are still functional. They do work. But I think what I want to do is make an automated storage room. So hoppers and all that kind of stuff. Something where when you're done with whatever, you can dump your stuff into a chest and it will automatically put your items away for you. I think that would be lovely. And then I'm kind and obviously that's going to require sorting systems, like lots and lots of sorting systems, massive quantities of sorting systems. Uh, and that's fine. I'm kind of thinking I want to put it underground. Like, I don't know. It's hmm. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Like if I put it underground, then I can, I, what I, like, honestly, what I really want to do is put it underground and make it expandable and leave, like, some empty spaces. So, because obviously, Minecraft is still evolving, right? Like, the game is still evolving, new stuff is still being added, and as time goes on, there's going to be more and more and more stuff that ultimately gets added to the game, and therefore... Oh, hello, diamonds. Ultimately needs to have a spot in the storage room. So I think what I want to do is I want to kind of, um, kind of future-proof it, if you will. I want to kind of build it with the future in mind so that when stuff does get added down the road, there's room. And I don't have to, like, redo my entire storage room or, or something like that. I'll, st I'll, I'll just be able to, like either add some sections to it and be like, okay, here we go. Ta-da, we've added a, a tenth section or, or whatever. Um, and or be able to maybe even fit some stuff in, in like existing spots. Cause like I have a feeling, well, in fact, I'm 99% sure that we're going to be getting some more woods at some point in the future, some new tree types. And the reason I say that is because there, uh, for Minecon Earth, there was the, like, choose what biome we update poll thing. 
And they mentioned new tree types in that. And they said that even the ones that didn't actually get picked would still get done. It was just a matter of what would get done first. So at some point in the future, we will probably see palm trees and we will probably see Baobab? Baobab? The big African trees with giant canopies. I, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Um, but we will probably see those at some point in the future as well. And I imagine they're going to be a unique tree type. Like, with its own set of wood and stairs and all that kind of stuff. Because there's nowhere in the... No other type of tree in the game is like a custom tree made using existing woods. Like, a birch tree is a birch tree. A spruce tree is a spruce tree. You know? If you bone meal the thing, it will do the thing. There's no precedent for a tree type made using like existing woods, if that makes sense. Cause some I've, some, I've seen some people say that like, oh, well, what they'll probably do is take like stripped logs and put leaves and then that's a palm tree. And I'm like, I don't think they will. That would be very different than what they have done in the past for trees. Um, so I do think that we are gonna see at least two new types of wood in the future, which I'm super happy about. I, I'm very much in favor of that since I use wood for like everything. Um, but I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see. Anyway, long story short, what I wanna do is future-proof my storage room and kind of keep that, um, the continuing evolution of Minecraft in mind when I'm building it so that down the road, in the future, when new blocks get added and I need to find a spot for them, I don't have to, like, rebuild my entire storage room. And therefore, I think it really needs to be built underground. I think uh, the storage room has to go underground for that reason, because if I build it above ground in a structure, that means that every time a new block gets added and I need to expand the storage room for some reason, uh, that means that I have to essentially remake the building. And I, because, you know, the building would be enclosing the stuff, the storage stuff, and it'd be bad. The other thing, too, is that with a big automated storage system that involves lots of hopper lines and redstone and all that kind of crazy stuff, um, I want to be able to have that stuff all covered up for the most part. Um, and if I build it above ground, that's going to make the build a lot bigger than it would otherwise be. Um, because I'll be covering up all the redstone and stuff. That's part of the reason that I haven't done any sort of, like, automated hopper stuff at this point yet. Uh, or automated storage room stuff, I should say, I guess. Is because it would take up so much space. Uh, the biggest reason, though, that I haven't was just the, the, the iron. Like, the, the hopper cost for something like this is going to be astronomical. And without an iron farm, it just wasn't really realistic. But now we've got an iron farm that produces a massive amount of iron. So I think we'll probably be okay. I think it'll be good. Anyway, I'm going to finish up a little bit of mining here, guys. I'll rejoin you very shortly. All right, guys, I am back. And it's time to jump into the comment of the day. This is actually the first comment in the history of kingdoms that I have actually deleted part of it due to the length of the comment. <laughs> That's never happened before. Um, but uh, I did read the whole thing. It's just I, I didn't want to read the entire thing to you because we'd be here for the length of an episode. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration. But anyway, the comment says, Wells, is it possible to revise on what I want to say to start recording my first video? I can't seem to be consistent in my speech. I go through nervous pauses. I'm 20. I'm just going to put what I wrote down uh, for the voiceover, trying to record my voice for the first time for others to hear is nerve wracking. And then I removed uh, basically the script that was there uh, for what would be said in the first video. I'm just confident that what I wrote is great, but I couldn't keep my voice stable to be strong, clear and not stutter on me. I found a good video to warm me up uh, to warm up my voice, but it doesn't seem to be enough. I would understand. I'm just so nervous. Uh, I would understand. I'm just so nervous to do this uh, strongly, but I uh, know what I'm doing is fine. And that's Megan McCormick. So long story short, Help me, uh, I am nervous to record my first video and I don't know what to say and things along those lines. So let's talk a little bit about uh, anxiety, performance anxiety, aka stage fright, aka uh, not enough practice. That's, that's basically what it boils down to. What many of you may or may not know, 
probably, uh, most of you probably don't know this, but some of you might because I have mentioned it a couple times over the course of my YouTube career. Do I have more of these books in here? Yeah, I've got a couple right here as well. Um, is that I actually have a background in performance. I think I was in my very first uh, play or I think I was in my first play in like first grade. So I've been performing since I was essentially a young child in some form or another. I've been on stage, I've done speech, I've done uh, theater, I've done band and choir, and I've sang solos, and I've read things, prose, and just all sorts of stuff. Public speaking, uh, and performance, and things like that, it doesn't bother me. But it's a practice skill, it's something you have to do over and over and over again. And when you're recording like a YouTube video, it's not quite the same as public speaking, because you don't actually have a crowd that's like staring at you as you're doing it. But in a way, it's kind of public speaking, because you're creating something that other people are going to watch uh, and judge. <laughs> I mean, that's the reality. People are going to judge you. <laughs> uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but really, it's just practice. Just practice, practice, practice. And even when you look at, like, YouTube, um, your early videos are always going to be bad. Like, that's just the reality. You, you, you're welcome to go back and look at some of my early videos from, like, way back. What it would it be now, like, four years ago now or something like that? Three or four years? They were bad. They were really cringy. Like, terrible bad. Um, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to be, what kind of a character I wanted to portray, whether I wanted to, like, be myself or play, like, an exaggerated version of myself or make funny jokes or not or be more serious or like I had no idea what what kind of uh style I wanted to have and it shows in those early videos but it's just you, you just gotta do it you just gotta like learn by doing and and keep going and eventually you'll kind of find your voice it's not something that happens immediately um it's just something that you kind of you reach that point eventually if that makes sense. Uh, and all the other stuff, like the stutters and the uh, false starts where you start saying something and you're like, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff, that'll just kind of happen. Uh, that'll just kind of go away eventually. You know, the ums and the ahs and the stuff like that. That stuff will kind of disappear. Also, one big tip I can give, and this isn't just for YouTube, but this is for any sort of public speaking whatsoever. Don't underestimate the value of a pause or of silence. Don't underestimate the value of silence. It's okay to take a brief break in the middle of a sentence and kind of gather your thoughts and pause for a second so you can be more clear so you can have clarity in what you're trying to say and so that people can understand your point a bit better. It's okay for that to happen. And you, you may have noticed, I just did it about seven times in that previous little phrase. And it's okay. It doesn't sound unnatural. If anything, it makes you smart. If anything, it makes you sound smarter than you actually are <laughs> when you take a brief pause in your speaking uh, to kind of gather your thoughts and make sure that you phrase things. Because when you try to go too quickly, when you try to like force words out nonstop as fast as you can, things tend to get a little jumbled and it all kind of falls apart. And then suddenly you sound like you're just babbling. So it's best to try and avoid that if at all possible. Uh, what's 60, okay, here we go. I need to like rearrange all of these books and put them into the proper order. So 62, 63, 64, 5, 7. Yeah, there we go. We're good. Um, so yeah, I mean, the big thing, practice makes perfect. Practice, 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 practice. Feel free to experiment. Realize that your early stuff is going to be not so great and you just need to keep going and just keep practicing and just keep doing it and eventually you will improve and kind of find your voice. Uh, and that's that's basically my tips when it comes to recording your, whether it's recording your first video or giving a first public speech or, or whatever. Just 
any sort of like performance anxiety, you do it enough and it'll go away. You'll be all right. And just keep practicing. But anyway, guys, I am very much out of time for this episode, so I need to call this one here. My friends, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Links in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.